All right, welcome to the show. This is Newcastle Museo Talk, and I'm your host, Simon Threadgate. Uh, this episode is going to be the last in what I'm informally calling season one of the show. Uh, it has been a big gap between shows. I started recording episodes for this podcast back in June or early July. We had our first episode, August 1st. The plan was to do a show every week, uh, which I stuck to for a few shows. Uh, but then my wife and I had a baby. And then we had problems with our house. We had some major flood damage at home. Uh, we've been living out of that house for some time now. That's dragged on. We've sold that place. We're just getting approved for the purchase of a new place. So long story short, full-time job of having a baby on hands and living out of suitcases. The show sort of took a back seat. Um, but the episode that we've got today is with Ian Lobb and Emma Hitchens from the Lasso Gary Hotel. Uh, Ian's the owner and Emma is the booker. We recorded it about October. Um, obviously, I'm only just getting it up now. I kept meaning to find the time to edit it, record this intro, but just never did. But this morning we saw in the Herald that the Lass has been sold. And not only that, but uh, it's going to be converted into an upmarket bar, a classy place where thongs and singlets aren't welcome. Um, Despite the news that music will still be a part of the ongoing plan, I can't see too many of the acts or even the type of acts that have historically played at the last there really being part of that in the future. So given all that circumstance, I thought I should get this up as a bit of a time capsule of the last as it existed right on the brink of sort of the last legs of its, its current incarnation. Um, personal note, my band Gutter Dog, we got to play there twice. Um, I spent a number of slightly drunken nights there in the beer garden or in front of the stage and sadly it's really the last of what's now a dead breed of venues in town places like the lucky country and the hunter on hunter that have fallen before um you know places where pretty much any band willing to make noise could get up and have a run if they wanted to um it's a a real loss of those sort of rooms that had a bit more character than you're likely to find at the uh the lucky hotel that straddles the grave of the old lucky country or the the university behemoth on the corner of hunter and auckland streets there where the hunter on hunter once just barely stood but um you know you can't stop progress so uh, we wish ian and his family from the last uh, uh, you know, hearty congratulations on the sale of the place but commiserations are in order for the death of that last standing sort of dive bar in town but uh in that spirit here's our interview with ian and, and emma uh, it was a bit of a one of my first recordings on this new piece of equipment I've got, so my microphone is way down in the mix. I'd recommend listening on headphones if you can, just to get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, let me know if you do listen in your car or on a speaker or whatever like that. Let me know um, how it comes up, but um, you should be able to get everything from the context of the answers. So um, The podcast itself now will go on a bit of a hiatus until at least March or April next year. We'll be set up in our new house ready to relaunch the show but um yeah just a big personal thanks to anyone who has listened to the show ever people who got in touch and gave feedback and um anyone who's yeah, taking the time to have a listen so here's our last show for season one we will be back keep following us on facebook you can listen to the old episodes on the apple ipod podcast thingy whatever on the app there you know what i'm talking about if you've heard it before um yeah check out our facebook page enjoy the show Start again, yes. My name is Ian Lobb. I'm the licensee owner of the Lesser Gary Hotel at Wickham. Uh, my wife and I bought this hotel 26 years ago in uh, March 92 and uh, turned it into the uh, best original music venue in town. <laughs> what was it that attracted you to the last in the first place? Was it, uh, it was already, I'm a bit, I'm not that old. Is there, there's already a fair music scene going and is it a popular place already or you saw the potential uh, for it or? No, no, I, uh, uh, I can't sing for shit myself. <laughs> <coughs> um, it was the cheapest freehold in, in, uh, New South Wales at the time. And we were in Sydney and, uh, Roselle, the Welcome Hotel. We, Doubled the trade there for the people who owned it and straight away they sold it. <clears throat> so I lost my job and a house all in one hit. So I thought uh, next time I'll try and get a freehold. So yeah, yeah. this is the way we went. Yep. 
Um, you, you've been involved in pubs a long time before that? Uh, managed one. Yep. But yeah. um, I've been involved in the alcohol game, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I had a beer truck. I delivered uh, beer in Sydney as a contractor. Yep. I worked behind the bar in Paddington RSL and Rose RSL. That's where I married, <coughs> met my wife and married a barmaid. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Bred a couple of other barmaids and then uh, <laughs> bought a hotel. Yeah, cool. Uh, musically, what sort of the music do you remember getting brought up with as a kid? What sort of music takes you back to your childhood? Uh, no, not really. I come from Cow out in the bush. It yep. wasn't, there was no sort of local bands out there, so yeah, yeah. you only followed whatever was on the radio at the time. Yep, yep. Little transistor up to your ear when you were <laughs> growing up, you know. Do you remember a point where you started getting into more bands? That would have been more when you moved more uh, much when I or? When I came here, this had a... Uh, this hotel had a, uh, a, a music license, mm -hmm. uh, and that's when I realised that uh, <coughs> we could uh, turn it into a music venue, yeah. uh, a full-blown music venue. So we tried various types of music uh, with the uh, heavy metal to start with because <laughs> that's what was around at the time, yep. and uh, that didn't go over too well with the neighbours and uh, <laughs> my wife. Uh, and then we went on to... Original music where uh, we put four bands on a night and they all had maybe 45 minutes each mm -hmm. and we thought that's the way to go. Yeah. Um, not all the bands can play for three hours unless they play cover band, cover music. So, yep. uh, yeah, we decided to uh, go down that field. Yep. And it worked. <laughs> and we got our own PA in then and the sound man. Yep. Um, and we sort of kept it in-house, kept it tight. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's sort of a, not a stereotype of the venue, but it seems to be that sort of punk crossed with the more roots blues sort of feel with music. Uh, at through, the moment, it? yeah, at the moment. Uh, that's probably because Emma, who books the music, is a little punk herself. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> but prior to that, we had uh, Millie, who uh, took over from her... Uncle Andy Costigan, mm -hmm. um, he still plays in a band, um, and that's when all the hippies are around. So it was a different sort of music then. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are sort of some of the biggest changes that you've seen in the local area around the pub in the time that you've been here? Is a change of, I guess, the the neighbourhood is very industrial. Have you have you witnessed changes with that? Oh yes, there's uh, no workers around anymore. Yep. It's, uh, this used to be when I first came here it was a workers pub mm -hmm. but uh, they're all gone they're all left the area um, but now you, as you can see the skyline's starting to change yeah. it completely changing yeah. and I've got 200 units going up on my fence line here in January and Century Oils has built a new next door here the big Fuchs building yep they've built a new uh, uh, complex up the Hunter Valley, so they'll be moving out by the end of the year and there's units going up there mm -hmm. um, and down towards the station you'll see various uh, complexes starting up with hundreds of units. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely changing. It hasn't changed completely yet <laughs> yeah. at the moment, but um, it's certainly changing. Have you found that, has there been a change in attitudes with residents around in terms of noise complaints or anything like that for the venue? Not so much here. Uh, noise complaints are always a, a concern. and there's, there's people that uh, live local that we try and look after all the time, you know, the ones that live close by, and, and you can understand that, you know. You, it's not just the noise of the bands, it's the associated noise. Like yeah. with music venues... You've got people that might come in groups, and they leave in groups. Yep. So you'll get six or seven people leaving uh, at the same time. So you'll get doors slamming and uh, yeah. you know all the uh, see you later things. <laughs> Maybe someone's packed a schooner glass in the back pocket and dropped it down the road. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens. We try and cut that off at the door. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you find attendance generally is up or down? 
at the moment from historical in terms of drinking and in terms of getting bands in? <coughs> uh, definitely down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, here in this particular venue, yep. definitely down. But there are other issues at play here. When they shut the uh, road off over the railway line, the railway crossing here yep. in front of the hotel, it used to go over to Hunter Street. Yep. That halved the turnover at the hotel yeah. one hit and that was three and a half years ago and yep. it's been difficult yeah are you sort of in the center of all the changes here with the train line as well and the road closures around those works for quite a period that would have been a again a dint on, a knock on the top of that what happened was uh, sometimes the whole block was was blocked off with uh, road yeah. signs and nobody could get anywhere near it unless they walked yeah and uh that was even us coming here. My wife's driven all the way down to the roundabout to come back up here, and she's like, "I've been through that many rat races around here trying to find a, a direct route to here. It's easy yeah. just to go all the way down, come back up." Yeah, well, that's human nature to go to the closest pub too. So, what I did, I, I pasted out from Hunter Street to the Lass, yep. where it used to be able to cross the railway line, and it's one kilometre. And it's human nature to go to the closest pub, so yeah. uh, you're not going to walk, especially a kilometre, young girls at night time, yeah. in the dark. You're not going to do it. Yeah. So uh, we sort of lost a lot of that uh, that trade. Have you seen any pick up with the new station there now that it's open and the roadworks, for the most part, seem to have eased up in the immediate area? Uh, yes, it has eased up, and, and you can get to the hotel again by car, but no. There's no nobody catches the train in that I've seen. Maybe yeah. one or two, yeah, yeah. and uh, gets off the train to come to the last. It's more Uber or yeah. taxis or walk. Yeah, yeah. So you're not anticipating once the, the trams run and all of our problems are solved as is being sold to us that it's gonna again have much of a flow-on effect to yourself. Well, it won't affect here because we've been isolated. Yeah, and you can't get here. Yeah. You know, it it's won't off the line anyway. Yeah, really. the, the, and the light rail starts on the mm-hmm. other side of Handel Street, which is further away. Yeah. It won't affect her here at all. Yeah. The only thing that will affect if they do build university campuses closer to the last in the future, or um, that's where the uh, trade comes from from yeah, yeah. young kids, because we do young kids music. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, all these units going up around the place, there's six. Seven hundred thousand dollars each, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's not the young ones buying no, it. That's no. right. <clears throat> Maybe some are rented out, but not the young ones. Yeah. I guess that bridges nicely into the um, action group that you're a part of. Or you, you spoke recently to the council uh, with the uh, task force into changes. Is that primarily about new developments and safeguarding venues around it? Or well, that's correct. Yeah, it was a parliamentary inquiry. Actually, we yeah. had uh, three levels of government there, the federal, state and the local council. And uh, it was a bit like this in front of a microphone, <laughs> mate. <Yeah. laughs> they had me surrounded. Yeah, yeah. But we got through it all right. But they, they're doing the right thing. There, There is a concern there to keep the music venues um, alive, keep yeah. them from going down and um, in Newcastle. And, and good luck to them because um, we have had a lot of offers here from developers who were going to knock down the uh, hotel and put... Units up over the top, yeah, yeah. so the, the money now is uh, in the square meterage around this area, yeah. and, and not so much the business. Mm. So uh, it, it does look good sometimes when you get a good <laughs> offer, you know. But at this present time, we've um, withheld from selling from developers, and hopefully, there's a publican come along, comes along that uh, wants to carry on the business, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, the legacy of the lass. <laughs> Do you see that there's a viable long-term future for the venue with the changes all around um, it? Or? <clears throat> it would be difficult for them to survive just as a music venue. You'll yeah. have to gentrify the hotel, yeah. sell coffee, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with what's coming, you know, with uh, like there's 400 people going to be living right on my fence line once yeah. those units are built. Yeah. And uh, it will change. Yeah. It will change. Yeah. It's a fair statement to say there's a, a gentrification really of that whole centre of town and you're sort of on the outskirts of that is it um, yeah I guess is it is, is, is it still a place where people want to come in for music do you think will be like because it seems to be pushed right out to places like the Stag and Hunter and 
I guess, away from that centre, do you think they'll, it's just not viable to run a music venue long term in the city anymore? Uh, it's, it's increasingly harder, put it that way. Yeah. But there do are. Do you find the, that's a lot to do with council or just people don't go uh, to this anymore? Or? I think it's uh, to do with the bands that are around at the time. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a lot of young bands around with big followings, yep. you'll survive. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Um, and everybody gets their chance here. You know, we do three or four bands a night, yep. um, sometimes up to 20 bands a week. Yeah. We do uh, events. Uh, some of the local kids uh, put on these events. And um, that's, at the moment, how we're surviving. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll get uh, hundreds of people instead of 70 or 80, you yeah. know. And uh, that, that seems to be the way they go at the moment. Yeah. You will survive that way. Yeah. The, do you think the days are gone where uh, I, I seem to remember, and I might be wrong in my memories, but uh, I remember there was sort of a built-in audience of, as such at venues like The Last where you, people were expecting there'd be music there, but they also wanted to drink. Is, is there still that built-in audience? That, that, no. no. No, we we did have one. Yeah. Like, it was more of a, a scene, you know, yeah. like, um, and all those kids used to come here anyway. Yeah. Uh, that was when the hippies were around, you know, <laughs> and the, the Morrow Park Bowling Club up there was yeah, yeah. Uh, a workshop for a lot of the, uh, the kids, the musical kids yeah. around town, and uh, and this was their sort of uh, lounge room. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but when that burnt down, that sort of, um, they, a lot of them went to Sydney, uh, Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, we lost a lot of the... Hardcore locals, yeah, yeah, and when they shut the railway line uh, crossing, uh, we lost even more. So, yeah. um, if you have a look around you now, you know this is uh, what time? Yeah. Half past four on a Tuesday, yeah. and you're the only one in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? Um, do you find that um, with, with how do you balance sort of putting on music and? being able to I guess still run a viable business is there a balance there between you know just putting music on for the sake of music like how much is it important for the bands to bring crowds in is that the point of doing the music or is it just for the have the music for the music's sake well the, the hotel's got to survive first yeah the hotel survives and the music flows it's not the other way around yeah, yeah, yeah. so we've got to survive first yeah, yeah. um Unfortunately, I've had to put some uh, of my own money in the last few years to keep the hotel going, as it is. Yeah. Um, but it would be nice to be able to uh, get through without doing that sort of thing. Have you had much sort of gentrifying the place? Like, it's one of the last sort of, not a dive pub, but it's got that, you know, it's that the old The grunge school. pub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know, that, the Hunter on Hunter's gone. And there's no places that sort of have that vibe anymore. Is it? Do you have much... Have you had any sort of inclinations to try and... Maybe a coat of paint, as far as I'll That's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I like it the way it is. Yeah, I do too. I love pubs like this. It's just... Yeah. yeah it's it, it's got... That's right. It's got something. And it's, there still are people that come here on Friday, Saturday night anyway. There are some that are still around. Yeah, yeah. Not in droves like they used to be. Yeah. But they And it's seasonal too, because the beer garden's a big thing to do with the hotel so if it's raining like on last Sunday we had a, a perfect Sunday we had all I think 20 stalls out the back out there and yep. um, you know, it, it, it really came down poor buggers you know <laughs> where there was uh, on their event page there was going to be about a thousand people coming and going through the day to the yep. markets there was probably a hundred you know because they were wet you yep. know so we're coming into uh summertime now so it, it will pick up again yeah because there's nothing better than sitting out there on a beautiful night in the beer garden because yeah, it's right, one yeah. of the biggest beer gardens in newcastle yeah it's almost a hidden oasis if you're just walking past you don't even realize no. the, the garden's no. out there and that's the way we like it we don't sort of advertise yeah. too much we like to keep our uh head down and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't attract any trouble that way yeah yeah what sort of time frame are you looking at for you to stay involved with the last year? Is there plans for... <clears throat> How much are you offering? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough, I don't think. <laughs> oh, no, I'm... Uh, as the staff know, and I, 
I know, and well, you know, we're ready to go. You know, I'm yeah. 67, and in the paper today they said that we can retire at 67. <laughs> so you know, I haven't got too much time left. So if somebody walks in the door and says, uh, "It's time for you to go," yeah. well, I'll be gone. Yeah, yeah. If provided it's a publican, yeah, and um, and not so much a developer. Yeah, yeah. Is that mainly who you get an interest from though? Is developers or uh, both? Yeah, yeah, no, both. So anything can happen at, at any time. Yeah. Do you face much trouble with local council at all in terms of restrictions on what you can do or can't do here? Or no, we're we're pretty good. We yeah. we don't. Um, it's not a trouble spot. Yeah. yeah. You know we, we don't don't have a lot of trouble here. That, You're sort um, of isolated enough. Yeah. From that foot traffic that probably did serve you well at one point, but now it's. I guess you're not on that route for the drunks who are just doing that pub crawl sort of thing that's right but not anymore yeah. No, yeah no but we never ever had uh pub crawls we always barred them uh, yeah. i didn't want the trouble to come with it yeah. and those party buses or uh, we don't have those yep uh, we don't have um, 18 year old birthdays you yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> we we wait till they got a bit of experience yep. so we picked and choose a little bit yeah, yeah. and uh do you have much say in bands that come through or that's all left up to emma or um, in terms of, you said Emma, sort of Emma listens to uh, or anything like that. No, or? no, not so much now. We used to. Yeah. We, we didn't do the louder ones, yeah. but uh, um, we sort of do now mm-hmm. uh, because um, the other softer rock and roll ones, I suppose, and they sort of dried up a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. We, we had to widen our <laughs> uh, portfolio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we we took on um, different types of music. Yeah. Where we never used to. Yeah, yeah. Who's um, who's your pick for top local bands? Have you noticed any bands that are? Oh, I think I think uh, probably Dave would be the one to pick at yeah. the moment because yeah, yeah. I mean they're going over next week to America to record an album over there, which is pretty good. You yeah. Know? Uh, but they'll be back for Christmas and. Yep. Uh, they they play here in November. Yep. So. Um, those kids are good they're really good yeah I've not been, made it to one of their shows but I've heard from everyone who's been to one of them that I need to make the effort so I might have yeah. to be here in November yeah, they, they've probably been around for a few years so yeah. they're not exactly yeah. new I suppose but I like the different variety of music in here yeah um, that was one of the first things I noticed when I first came here how all the kids that came in the, the, so much talent in Newcastle. Yeah, every second person was a bloody muso or something. <laughs> so that's why we diversified into instead of having one band on for the night, we went into four or five bands and yeah, yeah. and let everybody play. And, yeah. and uh, each one's got their own uh, following. So collectively, you've got a crowd. Yeah, yeah. So it works that way. Yeah. All right. I think that's everything I'll grab from yourself, and we'll tag team into Emma. Go for it. Thanks, man. Okay. Hi, my name's Emma. Um, I booked the band here at the Lathagary Hotel. I've been doing that for about four years. I've been working behind the bar here for about 11. Likely born? No, I was uh, was actually born in the UK. So I moved over here when I was eight. I went to Nelson Bay. Uh, from year three to year ten, mm-hmm. um, then finished high school in Musselbrook, yep. fin- and then got into uni here. And place. yeah, <laughs> been um, working behind the bar here. I was three weeks out of high school yep. when I got my job. Yeah, nice. yeah. Was the uni subject that you were shooting for originally, a degree in. I have. I, I do. I, I have a degree in media production. Oh, yeah. cool. Um, which turns out to be utterly useless <laughs> um, unless I'm willing to move to Sydney and do a year-long unpaid internship, which yeah. I'm definitely not. Um, but through that, I also got into contact um, with people. I help run the Australian Independent Music Awards as mm-hmm. well when I'm not here. So, oh, cool. yeah. yeah. Excellent. What's the sort of music that you remember being raised on that takes you back to your childhood? Uh, Pink Floyd, yeah. Meatloaf, Queen... Um, my dad loves the yellow. Yeah, yeah. Mum loves um, Madonna and all that kind of thing. My sister's middle name is Kate, yeah. after Kate Bush. Kate Bush 
Um, Mum joked occasionally when we shit her off that uh, Dad got the record collection and she got the children and she uh, <laughs> was wondering about... Yeah, yeah, who got the short end of that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you sort of branch off into your own musical taste? What was the sort of the band that kicked you off on your own musical my, journey? My gateway band was Green Day. Yep. Um, so I... Dookie era? Dookie era, yeah, man, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and from there I kind of started listening to punk and hardcore and all that kind of thing yeah. love the clash love the cure yeah. um blink one eight two in that punk sort of yeah 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 yeah, yeah, cool. yeah for sure Do you play in a band Have you played? no i've been badly trying to learn bass for about <laughs> 15 years yeah. so i'm kind of like you know the the gym teacher of the music industry yeah, yeah, you know yeah. those who can't do teach yeah. those who can't teach teach gym um <laughs> yeah so you don't have to be that talented to be a punk bass player. That well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, no, so I've, I've just uh, been trying to involve myself in that, that yeah. way. So you started sure. working behind the bar. How did you transition into doing the, the booking side of things? Um, Millie uh, wanted to move on yep. um, and they just, Millie and Ian decided I was the, the best pick to yep. take over, So, yeah, yeah. which is lovely. It was nice. Transition, you'd... easy transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, Millie. Millie had things in place. I mean, everyone who's ever dealt with Millie knows how wonderful and professional and onto it she was. So she left me in a very um, easy transitional. Yeah, nice. Kind of easy transition, but a high bar to sort of. Oh, one hundred percent. Still, still trying to meet that <laughs> bar. Yeah, constantly. What What do you sort of look for when you're booking a band? Is there anything that you're particularly looking for, or is, um, is, is it fill the numbers, or is it? Oh, look. It's got to be a balance. Of that, there's a, it's a massive balance for sure. Um, we used to have bands here every Wednesday mm-hmm. and that started be- to become non-viable. Yeah. Just uh, there was, I mean, we could have music here every night of the week, but we've got to pay them, Yeah, yeah. you know. But the first thing I do look for is whether or not they're local. Yeah. That's always the first thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, mild proficiency with instruments is also <laughs> handy. Does come in handy, and then I do. Yeah, if, if if a band's from out of town, I like to know. You know, do they have contacts? Who have they played with before? Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. The only thing we really can't cater to at the moment is um, hardcore, heavy metal, full on, black metal full on and, yeah, 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 full on death metal. That kind yeah. of thing. Anything that kind of incites any kind of mosh pit situation yeah. is. <laughs> Usually not good. Yeah, um, probably a couple of mosh pits from being levelled, I would imagine. Oh, my... <laughs> I've, I've actually had to separate two blokes trying to start a two-person circle pit <laughs> to Jamie Hay playing a solo acoustic set. Yeah, nice. Which yeah. is always... That's always <laughs> wonderful. Um, and, yeah, we can't really cater too much to, like, R&B or, or yeah, rap yeah. kind of stuff because, unfortunately, they're... Crowds tend to come in and tag absolutely everything yeah. nailed down <laughs> yeah. with permanent markers. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Is, did you, you you've noticed the sort of decline? As you say, you used to be able to do the Wednesdays and the every nights. Is there? It was financially viable to do that at some point, and um, look, stayed that way. I think. I mean, as as Ian said, we've we've had a decline in trade, yeah. but also I'd say that's probably it's, consistent, it's across consistent across the board, the definitely. Um, but the crowds aren't going out as much yeah. as they were. Like, I mean, I remember when I moved to Newcastle, you could go and get absolutely swazzled on $3 bourbon and Cokes at the Cambridge yeah. and get a cab home, spill a kebab all the way through it, and you'd still have change from a 50, yeah, yeah. you know, whereas you just – they we just can't afford to go out every night. And yeah. I know myself, I've got to be selective of which gigs I can attend yeah. um, just because I don't – I can't afford it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is terrible. But do you think there's too much of a reliance from bands on pubs as a venue to do music? Do you think that's because you, you sort of restrict? Y- yeah, guess, younger crowds and there's. Yeah, but also it's not like there's much else yeah, yeah. happening in town at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think we're very limited for all ages venues. Yeah. Um, I know the. I think it's. Um, the dungeon is doing yep. a few underage gigs, yeah. but I'm try and talk to the guys from uh, Boys Don't Cry as well because I know they do a lot of the underage shows there in town. With um, yeah, the, I can't remember the name of the space in there that they had that was taken off and maybe uh, you know, the Commons. Yes, yeah, the Commons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, and they they do great work. Andy 
um, from there is fantastic. Yeah. He's very dedicated, but it just makes it difficult. And we are very limited. Like it's, it's just limited in town what what venues you can play. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what what do you th- what you would have seen hundreds of bands here? What sort of defines a great band for a venue like this? What's the is it just about bringing a crowd? If you bring a crowd, then you can play be as terrible as you like, or is it? No. <laughs> I think you've got to have the trifecta. You've got to have talent. Yep. Um, and I don't mean like you don't have to be a shred lord, but you've yeah. got to be able to. Yeah, Hendrix in the house. No, of course like not. You got to, but you've got to be proficient in your in your um, instrument. You've got to have the ability to promote yourself, yeah. and you've got to rein the ego into a point where you can actually operate within the small scene we've got going yeah. here. How important is it for a band to have recordings so you can hear what they're like before you? Um, I don't need something that's been professionally mastered, yep. but if you've got like a live YouTube clip or just something that gives me a point of reference yep. so I know kind of where I can place you in a bill, that's yeah, yeah. always very handy yeah. for sure. Are you reviewing things like social media followings and things like that with bands as well, like how many likes they have or followers? And social like social media isn't really my forte, yeah. so we have actually got someone who takes care of that for us and she does a wonderful job. But I do check in to see, you know, how, how many likes has that page got, how, how you know, do, do they actually use their social media, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Who's, um, who's some of the best bands that you've seen here in this room? And then sort of who's the favourite bands that you've seen locally? Uh, some of the best bands here, definitely Mojo Juju and the Snake Oil Merchants. Yeah. And that's going way back. Yeah, but yeah. they were they are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I think Ian mentioned Dave before. Yeah. Uh, Flight to Dubai, they're always great fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had, you know, we've had Rave Tapes start here. We've had um, Kira Peru started here. Yeah. You know, so we've been very lucky with a lot of the local yeah. acts that then go out further, yeah. definitely. Do you, th- do you think there'll be a resurgence locally of people coming to gigs? I think it's happening. There's a, there's a surplus of bands, yeah, but not enough people Yeah, I think to see them. It's what hmm, it's it's hard when you're competing with DJs, yeah. And all you need is like a critical mass of people in your friendship group yeah. who wants to go to SJs instead of going to watch a band. Yeah. But I think what what happens and what I have noticed happening is after maybe the first couple of years after they leave school, that starts to split. Yeah. yeah. Um. But. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's on the up and up. I'm noticing more and more uh, kids when they're turning 18 coming here to watch their mates play yeah. um, and then coming back yeah. as repeat customers mm-hmm. just because there might be bands on. So we're def- yeah. I'm noticing more of that for it sure. Definitely, I think I've mentioned before, seems to be a young man's game yeah. at this stage. Is it a young man's game? You get, you get a lot of female performers through here. Has that, have you seen a change in that? Sort of I am seeing a shift. Yep. I'm seeing a shift, but it's always a difficult shift. Yep. Um, and I think for a lot of non-male performers, they get burnt out so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's only a very small handful of acts um, locally mm-hmm. that I know are consistent, turn up, do play. Um, but because there's such a small group of those people... Yeah. They're getting burning that crowd out. Yeah, or just them themselves. They're gigging themselves to death. Like, um, you know, and so they'll go on these massive tours, and then they're like, (laughs) have to (laughs) fuck. Like, yeah. (laughs) Um, So I I, I do try and get as many gender diverse bills on as possible. Yeah. Um, And it's something that is something I'm very passionate about, and I do try my best to do. But the majority of bands are pri- primarily male, yeah, yeah. Um, for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. you got the, the heaps gay show coming up soon. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, so. yeah. It, it's a very inclusive sort of space, but it seems, as you're saying, it's more a supply of bands rather than an exclusionary. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. We are a very inclusive space. We're a safe space, yeah, yeah. Um, and we always have been. 
Yeah. Um, that's something everyone who works here cares a lot about is maintaining that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have much hope for the city with the changes going in there, with the, the, the tram line now to save our Ugh. city? And I just I can't wrap my head around cutting existing infrastructure before putting the new infrastructure in place. Yeah. I just can't yeah. wrap my head around that. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know. I just I just organise bands. I yeah. am not. I I don't know the organisation that goes into that. But yeah. like fingers crossed, man, because it really can't <laughs> get any worse than yeah. what it is. Are there other, are there other venues? Do you get out to other venues? Do you, are there other venues doing things well as well that you um, know of? Uh, Spencer from the Hamilton Station, yeah. who is probably my primary competition. Mm-hmm. He's he's brilliant. I love Spencer. We've we've been mates for a long time, yeah. and um, yeah, he kills it constantly. Yeah. Um, on my list, I've got to have a chat to him. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. I'm, 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 I know he's in a wrestling group on Facebook. He's oh, mate, he's fan. well I'm, into I'm his WWE. Well and, uh, yeah, I remember seeing him open for the Dead Kennedys at the, the ballroom with his acoustic guitar. Yeah. I was like, fucking hell, this guy's got some balls. He does, 100%. And he slayed it. It was fantastic. Yeah. No, Spence is great. He's probably, like, Ian would shoot me for saying it, but because um, <laughs> he is probably my pr- primary competition. We used to have a bit of a bit of a competition with, with the Wicco, but I yeah. think our, our crowd's a bit younger yeah, they than that. Yeah, seem to cater that. Yeah. More 35 and 40 and above. Yeah. Blues crowd. Yeah, definitely. And um, like the Cambridge, whenever No Fire does anything with the Cambo, we might as well yeah. just... Close up for the night. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. But um, <laughs> we're, we're trying to compete with that, so we're, we're doing all right. We've got some... The, the events that we've got coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you get... Is it... I remember talking to um, John Fox, who does Sandal around the place, and he was saying that you'll have fantastic nights, but you can't really predict. There's no consistency with uh, it, is it. Man, one day, if anyone ever cracks like the actual formula for that, <laughs> they are uh, please tell me because I will just marry them. Um, sorry, Adam, but um, it is. It's. It's. You think that you could have the most foolproof thing going on and then I don't know the planets align or Mercury's in retrograde (laughs) and everyone stays home it's yeah yeah with um, as I said before with bands being reliant on on pubs as a venue do you think there's a reliance on from pubs on bands as a way to to bring people in and not look at like oh 100% at the back there and sort of alternative options to Um, get people through the door I think just in general in in Newcastle specifically because we have the history we have with live music it's it is a very chicken or the egg kind of kind of question but it would be a very very sad day if um Newcastle pubs could no longer cater yeah. to live music that would be devastating yeah. i think i wouldn't like to see it move completely away but i think there's a lack of that sort of diy spirit in newcastle um, in terms of finding alternative spaces to do shows this, or even if they exist I don't know, you know, the I mean, spirits there the spirits there yeah. it just you know i mean like the commons is a prime example yeah prime example that was very diy everyone involved in that was doing it for the love of it no one was making money out of it yeah. and um they got closed down under council technicalities, yeah. you know. So I think um, it's there. It's just, I mean, punk's not dead. It's just very tired, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, at the moment. Um, yeah, but it's... The restrictions tend to get a nice choke, uh, chokehold on sort of anything that sprouts up outside of the norm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, I mean, every every other... Every every year we've got a new collective coming up that yeah. are you know going to do great things. I mean, No Fire is a classic example yeah. of DIY grassroots, yeah. and they've killed it. Yeah. They've absolutely killed it. Um, the bastards. But um, <laughs> you know, so there there are other little collectives popping up. You've mentioned Boys Don't Cry. Yeah. Like um, Andrew from there is fantastic. You've got Steel City Music. Yeah. Um, who does, you know, Bandapalooza in Lastonbury here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've got all those little, um, yeah, collectives popping up. So hopefully if it's going to go anywhere, hopefully that's where it goes and it stays in the control and the hand of the industry instead of yeah, yeah. going to the bigger kind of semi-corporate management yeah. situations. Yeah. Do you think there'll ever be a day you'll have the standard cover bands running through the last year to... 
Uh, look, we've we we have had the odd one or two. Yeah. Um, we've had a, a guys called Gorilla Radio here a couple yep. of times, and they they bring a good crowd. But I that's not a true venue up at Maitland when I was booking up there. Yeah. And they, then you got taken away from me before I got to oh, no. see them. And I was looking forward to that. Show. Yeah. Well, they're they. I mean, they're great. And every now and then we'll have a bunch of um, old blokes decide, oh, I'm going to do an Akadaka tribute yeah, show. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. That's fine. That's I have no problem with that. But. Um, our bread and butter is, and, and where we want to be supporting people here is the original yeah. music. And it still is known locally as that go-to for young bands to get a go? Absolutely, yeah. I get probably 40 or 50 emails a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of, a lot of uh, how that gets around is just simple word of mouth, yeah. which is brilliant. We're very old school here with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the uh, sort of vision for you in terms of long term you'll stay here as long as they'll have you and absolutely yeah yeah, yeah for sure it all gets pulled out from yeah. under you tomorrow you'll still be looking at doing involvement in booking or um i think so definitely i mean i i kind of never really planned on getting here yep. but um i do i love it um the work i do with the independent music awards as well is definitely yep. a passion and um yeah it's i think it's something that uh, it needs people who are passionate about it to try and continue boosting it and, yeah, yeah. and getting it to tick over. Do you think sure. music and live music in particular has sort of lost that cultural cachet now that there's so many options to stay at home and be entertained? Oh, yeah. It's, it's an uphill battle on its own, yeah? Absolutely, yeah, for, yeah. Sure, yeah. for sure, for um, sure. And, you know, just just promotion-wise as well, I think I'm finding a lot of, a lot of the... Younger bands, especially, are relying so much on social media. They're not yeah. printing posters. Yeah. They're not, you know. I mean, we've all been involved in those very dodgy two a.m. poster runs yeah, yeah, yeah. with the wheat paste with and, the wheat paste yeah, and yeah. you know that kind of thing. Um, so you're seeing far less of that, and that's where I'd like to see it going yeah. back to: is yeah. that get people away from their screens and actually involved yeah. in. It's all a bit of too much information I think with the Facebook you'll see you might see your friends gig but you'll see eight other friends oh, doing yeah. other things and it just gets lost in the absolutely in the yeah. for sure and there's almost this whole like oh well if you have one night off now you have to do 30 things in that night yeah, yeah, and yeah. the whole idea of it is exhausting so you just oh fuck it I'll just stay home and yeah. drink wine with my dog like <laughs> a normal person yeah even just getting around you know I'll oh, have yeah. to pay for an Uber to get there if I want to have a drink then I've got to pay for the Uber home yeah and, yeah for sure yeah it's very different. And that's it. <laughs> cool. Mm. Well, the Australian Independent Music Awards. Yeah. You, you're involved in selecting bands. No, I, the... I'm, I'm, um, so I'm the the PR for the the personal assistant for the CEO of the charity. So yeah. I am the maniac running around behind <laughs> scenes with three clipboards, two walkie talkies, and a can of Red Bull permanently stapled into my hand. Yeah, yeah. So um, is this something where bands can nominate themselves? Yes. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's it. Um, yeah, so we've been doing that for... I've been involved for about six or seven years now, yeah. which is good. So, And that's all volunteers. That's We run off volunteers and... Yeah. Um, nationwide? In, yep, nationwide, yeah. 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 Do, you, do you get to hear a lot of the submissions? Is that part of your role? Um, sit through band? You'd, you'd probably well, be already up to your armpits they, band, Yeah, but. well, they well, those submissions actually get judged by um, people from APRA. Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, you've got people who kind of know what they're looking at yeah, yeah. Fr- from that level. Do you think places like APRA do enough to get re- their reach down to sort of local level bands <sighs> and let them know what APRA's all about? I mean, look, honestly, I, I don't really know enough about APRA yeah, to yeah. really make much of a, a call on that, but I I'd, I'd imagine they could definitely be doing more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a few like Music New South Wales yeah. stuff as well. We, as I was saying, there we did a we went to a, um, a, a, a I can't think of it, a seminar that the drummer from She Had did about mental health. Yeah. With yeah. musicians and um, that was put on by uh, Music New South Wales and they had someone from APRA there and that was sort of yeah. the first time I'd ever heard anyone sort of outline what what the go was. What they did, that. yeah. But, well, and I mean, you, and they, I think like. There needs to be more, like, you can apply for grants yeah. through APRA. Like, you know, so all these young collectives popping up, they can 
actually apply for government grants and I don't think enough of them are aware of that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, cool. mm. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that's everything we need to cover off. Excellent. Thanks Lovely for your time. To, no problem. Much appreciated. Thanks for coming in. Oh, no